Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah no, it is. Oh, 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 shoot. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. There's no way I actually tried this. In today's video, we survived 100 days in the new Minecraft Caves and Cliffs update. Except there's three of us. Let's get you guys accustomed. There's Miles, Bite, and of course me. If one of us dies, the challenge is over. The goals for this video is to capture the warden for experimentation, defeat every boss in Minecraft, and make an axolotl aquarium. Can we pull this off without a single death? Watch till the end to find out. Also, thank you all so much for 95,000 subscribers. We're so close to 100k, so this is your last chance to get in before we hit it and it'll mean the world to me finally hit the like button for the algorithm and let's get straight into it hey one here we go again we started off with just collecting some wooden materials for obviously the bases we're gonna build now the last time i did something or anything 1.17 related it was in a bunch of snapshots but this time the actual 1.17 is fully out fully released and we're ready to get into it shortly after i crafted up some tools and started mining some cobblestone so i could upgrade those tools and bam stone age for quite a bit at the beginning i honestly just caved top i was in search of some iron but i hadn't had much luck on the way there i also decided to pick up a couple variants of wood because we actually had something really interesting in store instead of actually building a house that's on top of the land we're gonna be building it in one of the new 1.17 caves days two to five in this duration of time we eventually found ourselves a bit of a cavern now this cavern was no normal cavern bite actually managed to find one of the underwater caves now if you guys don't know what it looks like this is what it looks like obviously your boy already had a bit of experience with dealing with things that are underwater mm -hmm. maybe like the biggest video i have up right now 600k but yeah i basically just used a bunch of doors to get around the place and found a bunch of iron and stuff so we decided to mine that up except the iron isn't the same as it was before instead of dropping us some regular iron they gave us these like iron fragments or whatever it's mad weird oh and i also found myself some copper i don't exactly know what this is for but i'm sure the other two do i, I hope another cool thing is it actually didn't take too long to find the new 1.17 mob also known as the axolotl yep that thing they come in different variants and colors and i decided to just start smelting up some of my iron because i wanted to capture one it's kind of like a pokemon you know but i was a little late to the party the other two have already got buckets and already captured axolotls, but hey, I wanted mine to be special, okay? I also wanted to pick a color they didn't pick. Luckily, blue was not taken. And no, it's not the rarest one. I'm not talking about that blue. I'm talking about the lighter blue colored one. Also, prior to me actually capturing an axolotl, I also found a bunch of fish. There's an entire school of them. So I decided to just start whacking at them, you know? Because I needed food. Your boy was hungry. Another one of the cool new 1.17 features or additions that we found was known as the glow squid. I'm not gonna lie, guys. The glow squid is not not my favorite mob okay they could have done so much better like i don't even know what these guys do okay like oh my gosh like all right let's be honest here do you guys even like squids like normal squids exactly nobody nobody likes them why, why are these here the only thing they can possibly do to make it up for me is dropping gapples and i don't think they're gonna be dropping gapples anytime soon so sucks to be them we eventually found ourselves in a really gigantic cavern now it was filled with water it was filled with lava all sorts of new looking blocks it looked kind of sick i'm not gonna lie what we decided to do was place on a crafting table and we made ourselves a shield all oh, right also i took a lot of the iron and made myself some armor i'm looking kind of iced out right now day six to ten we used up this time to actually start building our bases now you know i'm not the best builder so i really had to think about what i was going for and at the end of the day my house just ended up being like a, an l from a bird's eye angle all right we don't talk about that all right this is what it looked like beforehand and this is what it looked like afterwards honestly i was kind of impressed on myself like look, look at those building skills oh my gosh beautiful down right gorgeous oh and did i mention that we were dealing with the zombie apocalypse throughout all of this because there was actually no lighting lucky for you guys i even had fulbright i there were just so many mobs alongside this bite also wanted to show me a sign he placed down a sign and said something very nice to me actually and put glowing on it apparently the glow squids drop like a, a glowy thingy and you put that glowy thingy on a sign and it makes the text glow it honestly looks sick and whatever it said on it you guys should definitely do no like i'm actually serious i'm, I'm racing to 100k and I, I don't think i'm gonna win if we don't speed it up a bit anyways let's go check out the other guys' houses because you've already seen mine and mine's the best this one was miles house no i know it wasn't that impressive but, and this is bites house i think he used a bunch of copper blocks for it i'm not even sure what, what block is that but one thing i did like about bites house is he had a bit of an axolotl bull now this is where he kept his axolotl and honestly i thought it was kind of cool days 11 to 15 the one thing that was actually missing from my base was glass so i decided to make a bit of like a staircase all the way up to the surface and eventually we ended up at some sort of a beach and decided to take it from there after i was finally done getting some 
surface level resources, I decided to come back into our lovely cavern and our humble abodes. To a creeper and zombies. That was fun. Almost died. No, but it was actually ridiculous. We needed to light up the place and we needed a bunch of coal for that. So I also work on that. That's exactly when I decided to start smelting up a bunch of the sand that we got actually from up there. I asked Bite and he had a bunch of coal spares. So I decided to take it from him and smack it into a furnace that would eventually make all the glass I need. It also seemed that my base was a little bit unlit and somehow a creeper snuck in and blew me up. All right. Well, I didn't die, but it also tore a piece of the house off. Like, bro, I just built that too. While I was gone, Miles decided to make a bit of a tree farm. And so I wanted to help out and make, you know, a normal farm. That way we'd have an abundance of food without having to go up to the surface as often. Day 16 to 20. They didn't like my staircase. So they wanted me to help them make a different one. Uh, all right, cool. I guess I'll just keep the staircase to myself. VIPs only. After helping out a bit, I decided to also bring back some animals because we definitely needed a whole bunch down here instead of them just being up there. So I decided to bring in two chickens from the overworld, overworld, uh, the, the surface, and put them into their respectful pens. I also wanted to get some sheep, but I was going to do that later. What I decided to do was actually go up and right next to the staircase slash official entrance to the base, I wanted to make a bit of a watchtower. You never know. What if we see Dream in the distance? You know, we got to watch out. And this was the finished product. I also decided to show Bite and Miles. And while we were up there, it was also raining and it was super dark. The reason as to why that's important is because there was also a lot of phantoms around and they started attacking us. I honestly just booked it. Once I arrived back at the base, I also decided to craft myself a bed and place it down. I, I mean, we didn't have a lot of interior design and honestly, I didn't think I'd put too much time into it. I wanted to kind of progress throughout the game and I'm also garbage at interior design. Days 20 to 25, me and Bite set off on a bit of an expedition. We were in need of some goats. One of the new 1.17 mobs, or should I say creatures, animals, what, what, what are they called? Oh, right. Passive mobs that we wanted to add into the pen. All right. We knew nothing about them besides the basics. And we also heard a bit of a rumor that they kind of push you off if you're next to a cliff. So you know what we decided to do? We decided to stand next to a cliff. We had our buckets on the ready. All right. We were ready to be pushed off. But guess what? Honestly, I think we were standing there for like 10 to 20 minutes. Nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. I don't, I don't understand. Did we do something wrong? I don't know. At the end of the day, we just decided to take them all the way back to the base. Now, this was a very long journey. I don't know why we went out that far in the first place, but I mean, hey, it was worth it, okay? We wanted the goats, and the goats were coming with us one way or another. Even if we have to take them across the nether, that will be necessary. No, I'm just waffling. We, we didn't go to the nether. We just went normally because it wasn't, it, it was, it was far, but it wasn't too far. And we finally made it back, and this is exactly where we put them in the pen. Look at them just coexisting, you know, with sheep. That wasn't a mistake. So, you might be wondering, why is it that I actually decided to build my base on top of water? I could have probably used like the sides of the walls and carved out something but instead i decided to build my house right on top of some water and that's because i'm a man with a plan my plan was to build an aquarium right underneath the house actually i thought it would look pretty cool i had a bunch of glass and that's also kind of the reason why i got all that glass in the first place but i still needed some i did not put any time to waste and started exactly on that project i wanted it to be an aquarium for axolotls also like a safe place where we can even put them there you know i also realized that we didn't actually have a chance of naming any of our axolotls but was the one that found some name tags but we soon realized that we didn't even need name tags to name axolotls because they can fit into buckets if we rename the buckets the axolotls get renamed this was revolutionary and but kind of wished he knew that before he set out to find those name tags but that's something we can't change i decided to name my axolotl after my biggest donator on twitch ivy i thought it was a cool name and yeah i do i do stream time to time so if you want to drop by you know link in the description days 26 to 30 in addition to the aquarium i wanted to make a little bit of a lid because I didn't want them jumping out. I didn't know how they functioned and I was kind of scared because they looked like they kind of had hops. So that's why I put the lid. So mine was named Ivy and Bites was named Bubbles. But Miles? Now Miles is a little bit of a weirdo. He named his one Feet. Feet? Out of everything, Feet? Oh my gosh, that was a wasted level, man. Miles actually spotted another glow squid right underneath us. We wanted to capture it, but we were like, what point does it have though? I, I didn't really like the glow squids. He didn't like the glow squids and neither did Bite. So we just decided to leave it. Me and Bite decided to go on a bit of an expedition. We just went in one direction, in all honesty, to look for some cool stuff. Eventually, we did find ourselves in a bit of an acacia village and started looting a bunch of the bread there. That was a much better source of food than fish. Actually, it wasn't that sufficient because we couldn't really reproduce that. But we did have a farm back at home, so that probably would have helped out a bunch as well. But yeah, no, these, these hay bales really did carry on until somewhat of the very end. Once we finally got back to the base, we thought it was just about time to finally get into some serious business. And that was the nether. We haven't been there yet in this run, and we don't know what's different from there. It could be some core mechanics that are different. I'm not sure. I honestly didn't look up anything about 1.17. We're just exploring it together at this point. And we were in. We were finally in the nether. 
The sucky part about all of this is the fact that we were stuck in the nether because everything was enclosed. There was no way out and we had to actually mine out and this took ages to actually escape. Luckily for you guys, that part's edited out. For us, we had to go through that. Days 31 to 35. Eventually, after so much mining, we finally found ourselves at a bastion, okay? Now these things, the chests in them are phenomenal and I'm hoping they didn't tweak it at all because these things could give us a really big head start. This is a bit of us actually struggling to get anything out of this because running this bastion was the most annoying thing. I'm not sure why, but it like something felt different about this one. It was just, I don't know. All right, the chests were difficult to get to and there was a lot of piglin brutes. Piglin brutes are devastating, okay? So I wanted nothing to do with them. Now this is where things got a little problematic because we were kind of turning on each other. I'm not sure why, but we were honestly just messing around a bunch with crossbows. It was very dangerous stuff and I don't even know why we attempted it, all right? Because I know damn well if one of us died and we all had to reset, we all would have been upset. After we looted it, we also wanted to find ourselves a nether castle because obviously we was gonna beat the game and obviously we're gonna need some blaze rods for that. Right after everything went down, we kind of did this little trust fall thing. Well, not really. No one was really falling, but we decided to start bridging over lava, which isn't the smartest thing to do, especially with a hardcore series like this one. But listen, okay, I believed in my skills of bridging and I believe that my two peers, Bite Drums and Miles, will not be knocking me off into the lava, okay? Because if they, if they are, then they're both also taking an L because we'd have to re-record the entire thing. So yeah, safety. Days 36 to 50. Lo and behold, in the direction that we were actually headed at, there was a fortress that we saw at the corner of our eyes. So obviously, us being us, we quickly decided to, you know, tackle it. And by tackle it, I mean grab the blaze rods and get the heck out of there because we was not dying in there. And eventually, after we have everything we needed, we decided to head back. Luckily, you know, to our surprise, Bites actually decided to save the coordinates for the portal. So we went to the portal. I don't know why I never do these things. I, I guess it's just because I'm lazy. Once we got back to the overworld, I decided that it'd be a good idea to find some villagers. Why you might ask is because we also wanted to kill the wither, right? And to get to the wither, we need three wither skeleton skulls. These things are extremely rare, so getting ourselves a looting book is kind of crucial. And we wanted to do it through villagers instead of doing it through pure luck. Because I'm not a lucky person, but y'all already know this. So I ran a marathon. Yep, I did that. All the way over to a village that we found. But the issue with this village and the server that we were using was the fact that it kind of broke. As you can see right here. I tried to shoot some netherrack at the villagers or the void. What was I even throwing it? I'm not sure. But as you can see, it kind of broke and I didn't know what to do about it. Listen, okay, it's not my fault. All right, the server. So we just have to reconnect really quickly. I left Bite also in charge of the villagers because he knew a lot more about villagers than I do and started working on getting those trades set up with the looting books. But finally, after he managed to figure that out and we all headed back into the base, we were in the cavern safe and sound and we were ready to put the looting books onto some of our swords. Once we got that sorted out, we then went back into the nether, back into the same exact fortress we were at and started farming for some wither skeletons. Okay, this thing took ages by the way, but eventually I got myself one but that was about it. The one that I got was literally the only one I would ever get throughout the entire series and honestly I was not surprised. My luck is atrocious, okay? But Miles on the other hand, since me and him had the looting swords, he was also trying the same exact goal and he eventually managed to get two in one go. And I don't mean like two from one skeleton, I mean like two from two skeletons but at the same exact time, which was incredible. So we had the three skulls. Now you might be wondering, where the heck was Bite and what was Bite doing in this moment? Well, he wasn't actually recording the thing, it was just me and Miles that was recording. So he was basically just netherite mining for us because that's kind of boring and we didn't want to record that. You guys are so fortunate that you don't have to watch us walking through the nether because this took ages by the way. Like this was not just like a one-time thing, it was more of just like a couple breaks here and there because it was just so ridiculously hard to even find the wither skeletons. They don't spawn that frequently and I know damn well I wasn't gonna make a wither farm. But eventually after we got all the skulls that we needed, we then headed back and basically just called it a day. That was it for the nether, okay? We were done with that. Days 51 to 55. When we were actually back at the base, we found out that Bite was already cooking some of the netherite he got and he wanted to give us a bit as well. Obviously he didn't have enough for like all of us, but we should have enough for one set, I hope. But that also meant we need to get stacked up in diamonds. Somehow I actually didn't spot this before, but literally in the water, there was one piece of diamond. I don't know how I didn't see it, but obviously you boy mind it. We were already close to diamond level, so we didn't really have to go down that far. All we really did was just head straight, but something that I didn't take into consideration at all because I didn't think that was actually possible 
was when I was mining in a single direction, I got jumped by silverfish that came out of the walls. Like what? It made no sense. And I checked around, but the stronghold was definitely not near us. So I don't even know why that was there. Maybe it's a new update thing. But fast forwarding to after we got everything, I decided to make myself a diamond chest plate, diamond pants, an axe, and I left seven diamonds for whatever else that I really wanted or needed. Days 56 to 75. One of the first things that I actually decided to do in this portion was get some ender pearls because obviously to get to the ender dragon we were going to need a bunch of those so I you know set out into the world looking for endermen. Surprisingly there weren't that many and now that I think about it and look back at it I probably should have just went to the what was it called the fungus biome I don't know the blue biome in the nether to get these ender pearls I don't know why I didn't. Once I was finally back at the base I got all the ender pearls I needed. The only tricky part with it was that there wasn't that many endermen out there so that kind of delayed it a bit but i did manage to get all the blaze rods that i needed from myos i think i had one i'm not sure but i also got some from bite there we go we got ourselves the eye of enders that we need now another thing that we also wanted to do was kill the guardian and that was also on the to-do list so we had all the stuff we needed for the wither to be fair but i guess we wanted to get that out of the way first this is where things took a little bit of a turn okay because i went into my aquarium looking for ivy my axolotl but guess what when I looked into the tank, it was just not there. What I decided to do was I went over to Miles and Bite because they were the only two other people that were here. And I asked them where the Axolotl was. Bite didn't know where my Axolotl was, but Miles on the other hand was kind of acting a little suspicious. So what I decided to do was check out his house and there we go. In the corner of his house was my Axolot just sitting there. And I looked back at him and he just stood there as if nothing happened. I brought my crossbow out. And I aimed it at his head. After he realized that I realized that the axolot was taken from me in the first place. He decided to keep his distance. It was annoying. But listen okay. If we got out into a full on war now. We might as well just give all of our progress a goodbye. And I wasn't going to let that happen. So I chased him out of the base. He was basically on the outside of the base. And I was like you know what. Let me just pretend that I'm still chasing him. While he thinks. While he thinks that he's escaping from me. I'm just going to do my thing you know. And then shortly afterwards, Bite came by and handed me the netherite gear that he's made for me. And this stuff was looking good. I went back to my house and of course I get attacked by a spider jockey. Aren't these things supposed to be rare? Why is this thing in my house? Dude, legit, that thing came out of nowhere. All that there was to do was basically just wait for my other two teammates, Miles and Bite, to basically, you know, get their stuff together and chant a bunch of stuff. And we would have been ready to go, alright? Ready to tackle this guardian. All we really needed were doors. Day 75 to 85. Now this was a long one because we set sail. And I don't even know how long we were in the ocean for. But we were in there for ages. Like literally ages. We were just looking for a sea temple. Or a monument? What were they called? Ocean temple? I don't know. I'm starting to think I actually have one of the worst lucks, man. How, how does Dream do his manners? No sweat. And I can't even find a monument? For real? It's some different type of bias, bro. But lo and behold, eventually we found ourselves at a bit of a sea temple. Now this sea temple wasn't just any other sea temple. This sea temple actually... No, it was just some regular sea temple. But it did have some guardians. And that's exactly what we were after. The three elder guardians. We had to eliminate them. And the haste that we would get around it would be over. And we'd be able to collect the sponges and that's exactly what we did. We obviously crafted up a bunch of doors because doors are the most powerful tactic against the ocean and any type of water, okay? If you're going underwater, everyone knows in Minecraft, you need doors, okay? Doors are your next best friend. Besides the fishies or the axolotls. But you know, in this event, I actually decided to use my axolotl in battle. Yeah, yeah, I took that risk. But Ivy died. It was so uncalled for. I thought... I thought maybe the axolotls were stronger. I didn't know, okay? I didn't know that Ivy was gonna die here in a sea temple. You know, axolotls can kill guardians, they said. Axolotls are good against guardians, they said. But it's, it's whatever. Not letting it get to me, we eventually kill off the first elder guardian. Here's the second one, and here's the third one. And just like that, we have defeated the elder guardians and have taken their sponges. It kind of sounds weird when coming out of my mouth. You know... We'll just leave it at that. But at the very end of it, all of our axolots have died. Wasn't a smart move. We didn't have enough axolots and we didn't know, you know, we didn't know too much about anything. But eventually, we decided to set sail back home. Because that's where we were going to kill the wither. Yeah, at our base. Also, before we decided to gamble with our lives when killing the wither, this is also a clip of the graveyard we made in respect of, you know, our axolots. It really did suck. 
And we've got, you know, my Axolot, IV, Bites Axolot, Bubbles, and Miles. It really sucks that we lost them all. But, you know, things happen in life. And honestly, moving on from this is probably what they would have wanted. And it's probably within their best wishes. So I also thought gearing up would be a really good idea. So I decided to, you know, finish making the diamond set of armor that I was going to make. And the fight began. We had spawn in the wither. We decided to put it all the way on the side. That way it doesn't actually affect our houses and we began the fight. To our advantage, it actually was only focused on one person and that was Bite. Bite just kept on running and eventually we managed to kill it. And the Wither Star was picked up. We were ready to make a beacon. But before actually placing down the beacon, we also wanted to kill off the Ender Dragon. And that's exactly the next thing that we did. We went outside and I grabbed one of the Eye of Enders and chucked it into the sky. We then followed it across a large amount of space. See, I told you guys, the stronghold isn't actually here. I don't know why there was silverfish back when we were mining. Days 86 to 95. Eventually, after walking a ton, we finally got to the point where the Eye of Ender decided to go down instead of straight. That's when we knew we were right on top of it. We started mining straight down and honestly, it didn't take that long because surprisingly, we were right on top of the thing. Well, not right on top, but we were right on top of the hallway that led into the stronghold portal. So we didn't actually waste too much time finding it. This was convenient for us. In the meantime, Bite actually went ahead and got herself some wool, but we didn't have that much. I think we split the beds to each person, and that's how we were going to play it. And without hesitation, we sent it. We have entered the end. We all had our eyes set on the crystals. We all had bows. So this was a piece of cake. All we had to do was aim it at the crystals and get all of them. So this dragon of ours was actually a little bit stubborn. It just didn't want to come down for some reason. So in the first sliver of his health, it was all taken down by shots that we shot. Now keep in mind, we actually didn't trade in the nether, so we weren't able to get a bunch of arrows, such as the spectral arrows you get from trading from piglins, which did suck, but we had a decent amount to do a decent amount of damage before having to actually resort to the beds. So that was kind of like the good side of everything. And Bite got the last hit into the Ender Dragon. And it was over. The EXP raining down on us was a very satisfying sight after all these days. And right after we finished the fight, for some reason they started messing around with beds. They didn't actually right click it, but they placed the bed as if they were going to right click it. And it scared the heck out of us. We was not going to die this late. After that event took place, we also decided to go ahead and take ourselves the ender dragon egg obviously we were gonna put it up for display at our base and was a race to the end at least the outer skirts of the end now if you guys didn't know this is actually where the end cities lie and in these end cities there's a chance of it being an end ship within the end ship is where you both get the dragon head and you get the elytra so i you know i kind of wanted it i kind of wanted the elytra so we rushed into it and honestly miles was the first person to actually like see the end city go into the end city and be up at the ship you know he was there before all of us except for one small issue he had levitation which meant he couldn't go down to actually collect the elytra and that's where your boy came in you know i started building up i started bridging over and by the time i was there he already took the levitation hits and i just strolled on by grabbed the elytra and got my victory there was nothing stopping me and nothing in my way now a bit of an issue after i got the elytra i decided to go downwards and angered one of the endermen now, I don't know why, because I had armor pieces for every other piece except for the chest plate, because that's where the elytra was in, but I was down so many hearts that it wasn't even funny. Like, I was so close to dying, I just had to run and run and run, and I decided to just fly down somewhere and just keep myself secured until I regenerated some health. It was ridiculous, like I actually had no pit stop. After all of that, we finally decided to go in through the portal and get back home. I also made some, you know, golden apples because we were going to next go look for the warden. This one was also going to be a little tricky. We also didn't come by any clusters or any of the new biomes that are in within the cave. So we wanted to go explore a bit and that's exactly what we did. But right before we actually set out to get there, we also decided to place down the beacon of ours. And then right afterwards, we also decided to place the dragon head. We also put the dragon egg and our armor suit. For some reason, I actually didn't take back the netherite piece that I put on there just because it looked kind of pretty, but the others did. I don't know why I did this, okay? I honestly should have just grabbed it back, but I didn't, all right? So don't hold me accountable for that, but listen, okay? I was still I was still looking pretty good with the diamond armor, okay? Days 96 to 100. This is it. This is what it all came down to because we wanted to capture 
the warden okay we didn't want to kill it because i've already killed it in one of my previous videos if y'all want to check that out but we're here to capture one okay we want to keep one for ourselves okay call us creedy if you want but listen all right think about how difficult that's gonna be but we didn't care a challenge is a challenge if we end up dying it's okay we're just gonna end it there and we're just gonna leave it at like day 98 we died but listen okay we were determined so we set out and went cave searching and eventually we find ourselves at a bit of a lush cave now this place looks awesome right there's like these little berries and stuff I don't really know what the place is, you know, there for, but it looks sick. It led on to like a bigger extension of a cave and eventually Bite saw his eyes on one of the geodes. Now these geodes are meant for eyeglasses, but the eyeglasses aren't out for this version of Minecraft yet. They're going to be out in the second part, which kind of does suck, but that's just how it is. But it's the thing that Bite found afterwards was the thing that we needed. Yep. And there it is. Low and behold the warden ladies and gentlemen all right to be completely honest we didn't really know what to do in this situation but eventually after we decided to make a cage for it we started building this cage and this is what it looked like we didn't even know if this thing would hold we were honestly just basing it off of a hunch and this is how it went and it was captured the warden is now our property think about that for a second the opportunities the things we could test out like whether or not this is more powerful than the goat's push. There is so much we can do with this. But honestly, I was just happy we pulled it through without it breaking out or something, okay? We didn't have that much time left. So honestly, what we wanted to do was make some fireworks. But both me and Miles didn't know how to make the fireworks. And we were kind of lazy, okay? Listen, we did a whole 100 day video. We were tired, okay? But Bite, on the other hand, decided to full on just go back up. Get some of the materials we needed for the fireworks. And we were just waiting for him. Me and Miles were having a, you know, a little tea party. I kind of enjoyed the tea party, I'm not gonna lie. It's very relaxing and it was nice to have, you know. We had a little campfire. Although it was an enclosed space, it didn't get too warm. And at last, Bite had come back with the fireworks. We decided, we're not actually gonna light the fireworks within the cave. We decided to go all the way to the top of a snowy mountain. We all had elytras and we were all ready to fly off in our singular directions, okay? We were ready to just send it off and that's exactly what we did i sent i was the first one to just go forward and start flying soaring through the air as we were on our final night there wasn't much else to do i was super high up in the air and that was the end of the series thank you for watching and by the way if you guys have any suggestions on any other 100 day challenges you want me to do that's not already done by the way don't give me ones that are like you know parasite island or something that someone else already did then put them in the comment section below bye